Gamers, Monty King here. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to paste in and out of our VMs safely. So let's get right into it. All right, so hopefully, I kinda of worked on my mic settings. I know last time it was kinda of tinny, so hopefully it's a little bit better this time. Um, I adjusted some stuff, so hopefully it sounds good. Uh, anyways, today we're gonna to be learning about a Docker um, and learning how to use Docker a little bit. Now, I am by no means an expert with Docker and huge shout out to SecondTL who helped me fine tune this uh, Docker for me um, <clears throat> because I was just running the repo local, or I wasn't running, uh, I was running their repo and not my own and I wasn't able to configure a lot of the settings and I just, I've never done Docker really a lot. So it's it was a learning experience. So. Thanks, Second TL, for helping me out. So today we're going to be learning about this thing called Pasty. You're going to be like, all right, Money King, well, what is Pasty and why do we need it, right? Well, the first thing is Pasty is like, think of it as like a paste bin or a clipboard, right? But you access it through a web page and it stores all of these pastes. So this way, like, if you have a Windows VM or X Ubuntu, which I like running X Ubuntu for my um core wallets because it's a very lightweight uh linux distribution so it doesn't take up a lot of resources and this way we do is is you access it via your web browser through a port and this way you can copy and paste in your vm where your core wallet is and then this way you can go to your own regular computer and also see the everything that you pasted to it so this way you can have effective communication well, setting up firewall rules so this way you can block the communication from getting back to you as far as how your VMs, they can't communicate back to you, but you can communicate to them. So this way you're able to still paste and see and get your wallet address, your seed phrases, and this way you're able to actually secure yourself, right? So let, let me kind of like show you what pasty is so this way you can kind of understand more of what i'm talking about and then we'll get into exactly how to build it so we're over here at my proxmox at my house and this is just my mini pc that sits right there above my tower right and it has like some of my other stuff like my ansible and stuff on there but um i am i do uh under this ssh test i am running and you can see here that it's for pasty so i am using Ubuntu 22.04, but this should work for 20.04, but for you guys, if you guys wanna copy me, then use 22.04 server to get started, right? But let's go ahead and let's take a look exactly what Pasty looks like, right? So this here is Pasty, okay? Now you can see I just did a bunch of tests. I was just like, hey, blah, 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 you know, nothing, whatever. And you're like, okay, Mining King, but you can see that, right? Like, I'm going to put this one here. Hey, YouTube. What's going on? Red Panda loves chicken nuggets. All right. Okay. And we're going to click paste. Okay. And you click back to home. And now you can see that. Okay, cool. But I can see this. But can I see this in other places? Yes, you can. So I'm going to go to one of my servers here that also has Proxmox. And I'll show you that it can be seen from other areas, right? Sorry, it took a second and I had to come back. So I had to add firewall rules to allow myself to be able to talk to this Proxmox because I usually don't do all this from my MacBook. Um, but that's where I'm recording from, right? So um, I usually do it from my PC behind me. So um, I had to just set up some firewall rules in my Ubiquity. Um, but you can see here that we're at 10.10.4.14 and you can see that this is my Ursula wallet, right? For that new heavy hash coin. And you can see here that I'm talking to the same pasty here. And then you can see here is my paste. You could see my paste right here, right? And we'll click on it. And you can see that we could copy this out here. And you can say, hey, YouTube, what's going on? Panda loves chicken nuggets. 
so I can see the paste on my own browser and then you can see the paste inside your VM atmosphere, right? So this is a really useful tool to be able to be able to copy and paste your seed phrases and wallet addresses out of your VMs to yourself. So this way you're able to get this. Now you are able to um, download a container from Unraid in like their marketplace that's free and it'll set all this up for you, right? Um, so you could use Unraid and go to their marketplace. Now, if you're like me, where um, I'm not running Unraid anymore, I'm running Proxmox, or you're running ESXi or another type of hy hypervisor, maybe like Hyper-V or whatever, and, you, and you're able to stand up a Linux server, right? It's gonna be um, a little bit different, but this is Dockerized, so this way it is pretty simple to set up. So let's go ahead, let's head back to my mini PC here. And we're going to um, we're going to log in to get our uh, we're going to get our uh, IP address here. So I'm on the one uh, one seven two one hundred dot one hundred dot one seven nine. Okay, so we're going to SSH over there, and we're going to get on over there and say, hey, let me in. And we hit yes, and then it's going to ask for the password. And now what we're going to do is, and I'm going to switch my screen here so you guys can see exactly what I'm typing here because I'm SSH over and hopefully it's recording good. So we're in our terminal window and this is a brand new VM. Oh, okay. I can't even move it. Okay. If I move the terminal window, oh, that is weird. Sharing on a MacBook. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is gonna do a sudo app update and and sudo app upgrade because we just want to make sure that everything's up to date and everything like that, right? What I'm doing is is we're setting this up as like if it was me or you starting this from scratch, right? This is a brand new VM I just built, right? It it doesn't have anything, it just has the image built, right? So we're just now updating everything. And this doesn't need a lot of resources. I'm running this off of like two cores or like, no, like one core or like one core, two threads and like two or four gigs of RAM and like, like virtually like, like, I don't know, like 32 gigs of storage. It's like really, really light. Like you could probably even use less than that. I just ran that as my default, right? It doesn't need a lot of space. It's very lightweight. So we're almost done with our, with our, so, once it gets to this page here, when you're doing your update with, this is only in 22.4, all you gotta do is just hit enter, okay? Then you're good. Look, now we're back to our command line, right? So the first command was sudo app update, and then sudo app upgrade, just like that, right? So the next thing we're going to do is, is we need to um, install, um, some dependencies for this. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to install um, Python and then we're going to install TensorFlow, right? It's something that's required on this. I don't know why. I didn't make the Docker, but hey, it's what he did, right? So we're gonna do a sudo app install pip and then you're gonna hit yes. Okay, and all you gotta do is once again, just Tap enter, don't touch anything. Super easy. Okay, now, now that we have pip, now, now that we have Python, now we need to actually install something with Python, right? So now we're gonna do a sudo, instead of apt, like we usually do for Linux, we're gonna do a sudo pip install TensorFlow. And now, now it's downloading and installing TensorFlow through Python, right? So we're just gonna let it do its thing real quick. It should just be real quick. So now these are pretty much the few dependencies other than downloading, you know, Docker directly, you know what I mean? Um, which is like a gr granted. So I guess this is a good time to explain Docker. Docker is like, think of it as like a box that's built with a set of instructions to like recreate a server, right? It has a set list of instructions to always stand something up, right? And it's always gonna follow the instructions from top to bottom, right? 
Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add Docker to the sudo group because we don't want to keep adding the sudo command. So we're going to do sudo group add Docker is going to be our next command. And then we're going to copy in and paste this command uh, in there as well. And I will try and paste all of this into YouTube. So this way you guys are able to paste your commands in as well. And we're, we're just, um, so this way you guys can follow along, right? Okay. So now that we've updated and upgraded everything, we downloaded Python, we got TensorFlow. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to get Docker, right? So now we're going to do, and we're gonna be using, there's, there's regular Docker and then there's Docker Compose. Okay, we're gonna be using Docker Compose. So we're gonna do sudo um, app install docker compose and you hit yes and then enter and then once again all you're going to do is just hit enter okay now we're back to our command line okay now we actually need to do a we actually need to clone this gentleman's particular um, reap or his reap or his code, right? Because there's a file in there that we need to edit or else we're going to have issues with our pasty, right? Because he's created like an IP whitelist, right? Inside the Docker. And if your um, network address scheme at home isn't in that whitelist, this isn't gonna, going to work, right? I had issues, right? Because my 172.100 subnet is not in his IP scheme. So the paste, it would paste, but the problem is, is it would just go away because I wasn't on the white list, right? So the next thing we need to do is, is we're going to be cloning this gentleman's, um, uh, his code. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. Okay, so we're over here at the GitHub of the person who created Pasty, right? And this is this is their GitHub page. It has lots of information here, shows you lots of stuff about Pasty. It has instructions for Docker and how to do Rocker, you know, how to how to get everything, or if you want to build it locally with language detection and all this other stuff. And you can see the configuration options of this. He did quite a bit of legwork here and really document you know, documenting everything that went on here, right? And the way that I'm running this is the way that works best for me. So I'm teaching you this way. If you want to do it a different way, you're more familiar with Docker, go ahead. But I'm kind of new. So you're going to come up to their code and then you're going to, you, you're going to do, you're going to click this to copy, right? And we're essentially going to take a pull of this guy's, of this guy's code, right? And now we got to go back to our terminal Right, and then we're going to do a git clone. Okay, so we're back to our command line. Now we're gonna do a git clone, and then we're going to paste in the link we just copied, okay? But first, let's go ahead and, um, yeah. So we're gonna do a git clone, just like this. Okay, and there we go. So now if you did an ls, right? You'll see pasty, right? Before there was no folders, right? You can see here that it is cloning it into pasty, okay? So it made the directory for us. So now what we need to do is we need to cd and actually go into the directory, which we're in now, and we can do another ls. And now we see the Docker Compose YAML file, okay? Now we're gonna do a nano, and then we're gonna do on the Docker Compose file, right? And be sure to use tab. You only have to fill in things partially and you can tab it to fill in the rest. A little Linux secret there, if you didn't know. So we're going to nano into this, okay? And now we're actually inside of the YAML file and this is the configuration file that Docker Compose uses to build Pasty, right? So here you can see down here, that there is a pasty whitelist CIDR, okay? CIDR, if you're not familiar with that, is network subnets, right? That's what they're called, they're called CIDRs. 
If you're a network guy, you already know that, right? So be sure if you could see here too that there is no spaces, just make sure you're inside the quotation. And let's just say I would manually add your subnets you use. Like if you're like, I use 10.10.1.1 slash 24, and then a comma, make sure you have a comma because you have to put the commas there to distinguish that and make sure you use the correct cider like how big your i your ip range is right if it's a slash 24 slash 16 slash whatever okay so now i'm just using this as an example because i've already built mine and then you're going to once you put in the correct um ip cider right you're going to then do a control x it's going to ask if you want to save this file. We're going to say yes. Don't change the name. Just hit enter. And now you're good. OK, so now that you've done this, OK, now what you need to do is you need to do a Docker compose up to be able to bring the actual Docker up. Right. You have to run the Docker compose inside of this folder. Right. You're going to do a so you, you couldn't be like I'll just say this to say you just logged into the VM or whatever, okay? And let's just say it looks like this, right? That means you're at the home screen and you try to do Docker Compose, it's gonna be like, whoa, I don't know what you're talking about, right? So you're gonna have to always be in the folder like this. So we're in the pasty folder and now we're gonna do a Docker Compose. Uh, we're gonna do up and then just like this hyphen D and it should bring it up, right? And what I'll do is, is I'll go over to my other VM. We'll take it down and then I'll bring, I'll, I'll show you this one here. So just give me one second. Okay. So we know this IP address is, um, is, uh, 172.100.100.179. So we're going to go to that address. All right. So now you can obviously see that, Hey, we can set some pace here. We can blah, 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 blah. And there you go. We have pasted. It is set. She is good to go. So that is going to be how you make your pasty Docker, right? And this way you guys are able to safely paste in and out of your VMs. And this way you're able to actually get this thing to be able to get your seed phrases out, not have to sit there and write everything out on a piece of paper or use something unsecure like any desk, which can also, when you're any desk in, can also bring viruses back to you. So keep that in mind. So anyways, guys, this is the money can give it you the most hashes and I'll see you next time.